Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Ranks Every Boss in the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy from Easiest to Hardest. This game might be more kid-friendly, but it's still me doing this, so according to about 7% of viewers, you can expect a lot of unfunny cringe where I'm trying too hard and my thumbnail ruined the video somehow. We're ranking every boss across all three games, let's begin! Number 1, Crash 1, Papu Papu. The easiest boss in the trilogy is Papu Papu, and it doesn't get much easier than jumping on a tribal plumber's crack over and over. This boss makes it very evident that remastering a character does not always make them look better. Papu Papu looks like instead of scalping people, he just cuts off their man tits and glues them to his own. Number 2, Crash 2 Komodo Brothers. The remaster added the boots power-up from Crash 3, and let me tell you it is very fun replaying bosses with boosted speed. Even when you're not zipping all over the place, the Komodo brothers are very easy, since you always have 90% of the playing field to work with, it's safe. Spinning whichever one is Mo into whichever one is Joe after he's done spinning around is a guarantee, since no matter the direction, he'll just rebound off walls and into his brother's lap with apparently a lot more velocity than it seems. In the meantime, you can just run around like Usain Bolt on cocaine while you wait for your chances. Number 3, Crash 1 Pinstripe Potoroo. I looked it up and Potoroos are real animals, though I guess in a game about bandicoots I shouldn't be surprised. Naughty Dog's got a hard on for obscure marsupials. This boss fight is why children and teenagers all over the country are marching for change. You take cover behind the most reinforced upholstery I've ever seen, while Pinstripe empties his Tommy gun at you, which is the most kid-friendly name for an automatic weapon I can think of. Hitting him while he has to reload does damage, and then you dive back behind the lounge chairs made of titanium alloys to avoid subsequent fire. Keep doing that to eventually knock him out, because the only thing that can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good bandicoot with a spin attack. Number 4, Crash 2 Neo Cortex. The jetpack levels were always the best, weren't they? Unclick safety, pulse trigger. In this level, you must chase the fleeing Cortex with your jetpack and spin him three times before he escapes. The only problem with that is it's sometimes hard to know when you're actually in spin range, but once you hit him the first time, it takes about five seconds to catch up and hit him again every time, leading to a boss almost as short as Papu Papu, and a final encounter with no cinematic tension whatsoever. Number 5, Crash 3 Tiny Tiger. This fight proves that getting cocky with power-ups can be a death sentence when a game's hitboxes are all fucked up. You can just eat me while I'm spinning? I call BS. So a tiger is commanding a horde of lions to attack you. All that's missing is Black Panther. The lions can be spun normally, but maybe in this case you're better off avoiding them. As for Tiny, you just spin him after he jumps around for a bit while carrying a pitchfork he's not even using until the final stab. In the original, there was an audible boo from the crowd every time you hit him, but here they took that out because it's too mean, and children can't handle negativity without killing themselves on Facebook Live. Number 6, Crash 2 Tiny Tiger. More like Tiny Tigger. <laughs> Here's an example of how long this battle can take. You need to trick Tiny into jumping where there's no platform while they disappear, but sometimes you're not terribly effective at it. He follows your path exactly, but if the platforms are disappearing in the wrong places, you're in for a slog if you play fair. So don't. If you see a gap, do a slide spin jump right across that, and Tiny will attempt to follow you with a non-slide spin jump and fall to his delayed death every time. Really speeds up the proceedings. Number 7, Crash 3. Three entropy. Dr. Entropy's name represents a gradual decline into disorder and is also a thermodynamic quantity representing the unavailability of a system's thermal energy for conversion into mechanical work, which is why his steam-powered suit malfunctions for a bit after every group of attacks, otherwise known as smart fucking boss design. Number 8, Crash 2 Ripper Roo. Remember in the original when the boxes would give off a glow that let you know their explosive radius? Vicarious Visions was like, nah, take that out. Ripper Roo jumps around the arena activating TNT with his gentleman's cane somehow while his feet uncover nitros. Then, like the absolute madman he is, he just goes and detonates everything right where he's standing. Imagine setting a bear trap and then just casually stepping in it. That's the level of irreverent psycho we're dealing with here. Spinning Ripper Roo after the nitros stun him is how you do damage and eventually knock him out. He always does the boxes in the same pattern every attempt, so if you just know where to stand beforehand it's pretty easy, but those blast radiuses can still make you nervous. Number 9, Crash 1 Ripper Roo. 
I find this version harder because you have to jump on the floating TNTs at just the right moment. Though again, if you suss out the timing pattern, it's always the same, so you can replicate the results if you learn where to be at any given time. Ripperu jumps back and forth in a set way till he blows up the first time before changing his pattern and repeating the process. I might have good rhythm, but when my timing isn't governed by music and a beat, I am complete ass. I did manage to figure it out relatively painlessly though, so you can follow the example if you need it, even though it's probably not optimal at all. Number 10. Crash 3 Engine. Remember in the original when you could actually tell if you were hitting the sections because they made any sound and visual effects at all? I don't know if somebody forgot to execute a file, but your guess is as good as anyone's whether your bullets are hitting or having no impact. Like, okay, fine, they jiggle a little, but that ain't nothing. Once you break all the sections off the first phase, Pura comes and attaches a ray gun to the bottom of your ship that adds a sound effect and little else. It could just as easily not be there, and who would care? But this whole battle is way easier than the original, so there aren't many stakes anyway. Number 11, Crash 3 Neocortex. The final boss of the final Naughty Dog game, Crash 3 Cortex feels like a proper boss battle. He floats around in the back, occasionally shooting at you while the brother masks tussle around the arena in very hazardous to your health ways. It really feels like Aku Aku is actively trying to make you collateral damage in his battle with his evil nemesis. The third phase has them home in directly onto your location every time for shit's sake, and it's like, dude, watch it. Cortex will eventually toss out a group of mines, and then his force field will deactivate, which is your chance to run up and spin him, and then spin him several more times into the conveniently open sewer grate in the middle. Do that three times and he's gone. Just don't jump into the same hole after you've already beaten the boss just to see what will happen, because I did that once, and I can tell you it restarts the whole thing. Number 12, Crash 2 Engine. At first I was skeptical of the mechanics of this fight, like there's no way throwing Wumpa fruit at specific parts can break a flying machine. But then I remembered that a plane once went down because a herd of geese were sucked into one of the engines, so maybe there's something to the science behind this encounter. What would have been cruel is if there was a max number of fruit you could have, like 99, because everyone is just mashing square the entire time when they do this, and we must burn through hundreds. You have to lead your target a bit since it keeps strafing all over the place, but as you break pieces off, you never stop doing the same thing. Number 13. Crash 1 Koala Kong. This boss is actually easier than it looks, but it requires some solid jump timing. You're able to run around the full width of the arena, but since falling TNTs restrict your movement, it's better to stay on one side and just leap over every boulder thrown at you. You can spend the entire fight in this corner until he throws the bigger block you're supposed to spin back at him without hitting one of the minecarts that make for portable shields. As you go, more TNTs will be dropped, but never on the left, which I'd consider a design flaw to be exploited. Just keep spinning rocks into his flexing pecs until he's whisked away to who knows where. Probably like a den of koala whores, deep in the back of the cave, nice. Number 14, Crash 1 Nitrous Brio. This is one of the bosses I think Vicarious Visions actually made worse. With the help of some unidentified hitboxes and a lack of noticeable depth perception when it comes to Brio tossing his explosive potions. Jumping on the green goo monsters allows you to repeatedly squirt it in Brio's face, while avoiding his last group of purple explosion potions is a matter of guesswork near the end. He even throws them slower than in the original, but I think that makes it even harder to cross back through them when you run out of space to run. The unpredictable fun doesn't stop there though, because once he becomes the Incredible Hulk, you get to just hope that the game recognizes that you have landed on his head and not inside his mouth. You really have to just sit on that brick and wait ages for him to get closer than you think he needs to, so you can minimize the chances of you dying for no reason. Number 15, Crash 1 Cortex. Garbage hitboxes is basically a Vicarious Vision signature at this point, and that talent is on full display in this fight too. <laughs> Bullshit. This fight feels more zoomed in than before, and I'm pretty sure the bullets travel faster, which when combined together equals good luck, you need it. Spinning the green bullets is how you damage Cortex, but unless you know exactly where to be through trial and error, the quick velocity of them means they can easily whiz by you before you can get there, and then you have to do that section over. Eventually you'll get to a point where they come at you from the sides, traveling up and down in an arc, and boy does the tip of their height just barely clear your forehead. If you're trying to trim that mohawk, that's a way to do it. This is one of the few battles that makes me tense, because you never know when you're gonna spontaneously combust when a bullet gets close but clearly didn't touch you, so for me it's the second hardest encounter of the games. Number 16, Crash 3 Dingadile. The hardest boss in the Insane Trilogy is Dingadile from Crash 3. 
Dude, VV cranked his AI up to 11. He knows where you are at all times and he leads you. Now he's still a computer, which means he can be exploited. So if you bait him into leading you and then fake him out over and over, you'll be in no danger for that phase. But when he's shooting his bullets overhead, they will chase and surpass you every time now. So you need to find the perfect window to move backwards and avoid the splash damage. The reason this boss is harder than the rest is because you need to be on your game at all times, as one mistake will burn you to a crisp. When Dingadile is circling around, it's fucking scary, like my heart rate increases and everything. Thank god I figured out how to bait him or I'd be recording this video from the hospital. Well that's gonna do it for this boss ranking, I hope you enjoyed it, I've got more on stuff like the Souls games and Kingdom Hearts and a bunch of other assorted things. I made this because the Spyro remaster announcement got me hyped, and I want to make one for that too when that comes out. To me, my channel is a treasure trove of unexpected things, I've got comedy, music, games obviously, and tons of one-off videos, so search through it, you might find something neat. Like, share, and subscribe and whatnot, and I'll see you guys next time.